Well, really, before the consulting engineers got going in the 18th century, if you're a client and you want something built, you have to rely on your own knowledge. Or in the case of the state, um, in the Middle Ages, the church, they were bringing people in from overseas, from elsewhere in Europe, because the, the expertise didn't really lie in the UK at all. So in, in the 18th century, there was sufficient demand for people in this country because of the growth of the economy to make it worth people's while becoming engineers and offering independent services. So the, the consultant really wasn't trying to peddle their own wares. They weren't trying to sell their own gadgets. They were actually offering independent advice. And if you were spending money, you wanted to have to be reasonably assured that the money was going to be well spent, wisely spent on something that was going to work. Well, I think for a number of reasons, um, and again, it varied in different times from the Industrial Revolution onwards. Um, engineers were needed and they were wanted, um, and a good engineer was, um, was wanted all over the world. And uh, they became consultants and they advised um, governments and utilities and other people all over the world um, for centuries and still do. Um, and uh, we wouldn't have much infrastructure in Britain without it, and actually a lot of the rest of the world wouldn't without British consulting engineers.